Hi everybody, it's Carrie Ann. Welcome to my living room, which is where I've been um, for the past three weeks. And um, I prepared something uh, for you in my reading in my living room. Um, so here it is. I try to write. Every day I wake up with these intentions. I'm a writer, this is what I do. Put language to experience, make meaning, arrange events and characters into some relatable form to show us we are human. But I'll tell you, since we've closed our doors and stayed inside, I've had no words to offer. I have no story to tell you that would let me or you understand anything we are living right now. I was working on a new novel. It was about a catastrophe that forced radical change in our lives. And suddenly, the real world trotted into my story and everything stood still. My characters stopped what they were doing and looked at me from the screen. What the fuck, Carrie-Anne? What are we supposed to be doing now? I don't know, I tell them. We'll just have to wait and see. I was writing an apocalyptic fairy tale. It's weird, right? These two words mushed up against each other like that. Like everybody, before COVID-19 appeared, I was preoccupied with climate change and climate justice. The edge of the edge. I spent a year wondering what story needs to be told in this moment. It felt like apocalypse was coming. I was freaked out and angry that not enough was changing to alleviate human suffering and sustainable life. But at the same moment, I also felt an overwhelming tenderness, a profound sense of wonder. I think catastrophe is like that. Grief happens before the loss even does. So it also has this fairy tale quality. Our hopes, desires, and dreams also make themselves acutely known. Beauty, too. Someone said to me that fairy tales are not real, though, but we live fairy tales all the time. We don't outgrow them. We internalize their narrative forms and tropes and we'll try to keep shaping our lives into meaning. So an apocalyptic fairy tale was as real as I could get in storytelling. The new book also had a raccoon narrator, so it is based in Toronto after all. It is much more a raccoon story than a human one. Yay me, I thought. I was set to have a first draft done by May. But you know what happened next. COVID-19 appeared. An unexpected character that walked into all our scenes and brought the world to its knees. COVID-19 is quite a protagonist. Some will call it a master villain. Some would call it just a character living its own logic and destiny. There are many ways to tell that story, but for now we only have the inciting event, which is what we call the scene that launches the story, the moment COVID-19 walked into the room. Meanwhile, we're all waiting. We're all braced for what happens next. And unlike a novel or a film, this middling is a very long one. We are in between meaning. I think there are some creatives who have been able to hold on to their craft and I hope it's giving them ground to rest on. Instead of writing, I did something peculiar. Well, peculiar for me anyway. I started stitching. If you know me, you would know that I claim that aside from language, I have no artistic bone in my body. For example, I love the idea of myself as a knitter, but I have never finished a project because scarves look like capes for my dog at the end of it all. I do not like counting. I am not that organized to keep track of rows and pearls and such. Yet one day in January, before COVID landed in Canada, I walked into a craft store and bought a bunch of colorful threads and a few patterns. I needed something to do with my hands. It was instinct. Everything I do is instinct. Falling in love, eating cake, choosing what I wear every day. I reach before thinking, and so I'm glad that I reached for those threads. Without words, I can be very lost. Writing books have happened only a handful of times, and what follows is a very sad Carrie-Anne. I am a lump in my bed. I am empty, depleted. So in my self-isolation, without words, I reached for the threads. It began with just playing. A couple of friends had their book launches canceled because of the lockdown. And these are very important events for us literary types. They are birth, a wedding, a party, all rolled into one. Instead of being able to hug and kiss and love up on my writer friends, I stitched their book covers as gifts. I think it made them happy. It made me happy, and so I kept doing it. Every day I thought of someone special and did a piece for them. It's been over three weeks now, and my pile is getting high. Let me show off some of these. This was the first one, which is a book cover for my friend Kinesia Lubrin. 
And this is her book cover, The Disgraphist. This one I did for another poet, Gwen Benaway, Daybreak. This one I did for Amber Dawn, My Art is Killing Me. It's so much fun doing those. And then I started just doing other things, like I couldn't breathe and I thought that perhaps I was having symptoms of the illness, but then I realized it was probably just panic and anxiety. Not just, but you know. So I thought about lungs a lot and I did this piece. And then I did one for my friend Delilah who's having a baby any moment now. And I stitched her baby a blanket of the Northern Lights. His name is Kalik. Um, so this stitching has kept me really grounded and pulled me off from falling into this pit of despair, which I, I really physically see in my living room that I could fall into at any moment. And what it's allowed me to do is hold on to my friends and all the things that are important to me and that matter. And it gave me another kind of language to express myself when words have not been able to come. Um, it's really surprised me. Uh, I don't know how to stitch. I'm just kind of fumbling my way through. But as any creative could tell you, a lot of what we do is intuitive. And so I've been so happy that I've been able to have this other kind of language to express myself. I like to think that all of us are in our own living rooms, able to have some kind of expression of what we're going through and to be able to find some comfort and solace that we are doing this alone and together. I have no idea what world we're going to be walking out of at the end of this, but I like to think that the world is being made right now in our living rooms, in isolation, in our imaginations, on the internet, and that we'll be ready when we come out. I hope you are well. Take good care. Bye from my living room.